ไม่เจอเลย
Please be seated. Welcome. We're honored that you're here. Hear this call to worship. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. And so he made him a partner in life. We learn from this that God wants us to be in relationship, that God honors the institution of marriage. Let's pray. Father, we do ask that you would be with us now, that you would send your spirit, that you would take these moments and that you would make them last for forever. We thank you for these two, for Daisy and Matt, for bringing them together. And we ask, God, that you would take the glory and what a special, beautiful moment this is. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're gathered this afternoon in the sight of God and this whole company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable state instituted by God, signifying to us the mystical union that exists between Christ and His church. Therefore, it's not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but instead reverently and deliberately and in the fear of God. For this kind of marriage, these two come now to be joined. Now we'll be having a special reading. A reading from Corinthians, verses 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to the hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Hmm. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we know prophecy in part. But when completeness comes, what it is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. When I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away my childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Thank you. Now we'll have a special song sung by Matt's niece, Ella.
Hey, man. Yeah. That was amazing. Matt, after that beautiful song, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's word in the holiest state of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others to be faithful only to her, so long as you both shall live, will you? I will. Daisy, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's word in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others to be faithful only to him, so long as you both shall live, will you? I will. One more passage. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let's pray. Father, use this time to center their marriage around Jesus and his love for us. Cause their marriage to be filled with sacrifice and forgiveness and tenderness and patience. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. There's a movie quote I like from a romantic comedy from years back. The son is talking to his dad about how much he feels in his heart and his dad stops him and says this, what you feel only matters to you. It's what you do to the people you say you love. That's what matters. It's the only thing that counts. Throughout your marriage, you will be tempted to focus more on each other, excuse me, more on your feelings than you will on each other. Love can shatter expectations. You should start to feel like this isn't exactly what I hoped it would be. This doesn't feel as good as it used to feel. Marriage can be hard, but the heart is what makes it beautiful. The Bible tells you right here how hard it is to love, but how you should treat one another. It said, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothed yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness. Did you hear that? The secret to love is how you treat the other, not how you're feeling on the inside. Love is, stay away from him, sorry. <laughs> love is when you put the other person first. It sounds easy to do this right now, but based on the premise that the other one will be doing it as well. In your marriage, you will be tempted to say, what about my needs? What's in it for me? Or sin will get in the way. Instead, you're supposed to focus on how you treat one another with compassion and kindness. The secret of loving one another is in the actions for the sake of the other. You heard it too, look, compassion. That's mercy and empathy. When she's weak or hurting, you'll be compassionate. And when he's sad or discouraged, you'll be compassionate. It's kindness, treating each other with warmth and grace. Humility, lifting the other person's needs above yours. At some point in your marriage, you will both be muttering to yourselves in a room across the house about how angry you are with each other. <laughs> And you'll be thinking, she's the one that messed up, or he's the one that messed up. I'm not going in there. And at that point, humble yourselves. Remember that you it was always going to have mistakes. Humble yourself. Cross the distance in the house. Go and find one another and apologize. Matt, you live with the sense that you're what's wrong with the marriage, not that what Daisy's wrong with the marriage. And Daisy, you live with the sense that you're what's wrong with the marriage. It'll keep you from turning on each other and feeling entitled. And gentleness, you use your strength to treat the other one well, not poorly. And patience, not letting other people's mistakes 
get in the way of how you treat one another. In each of these ways, you see that you focus on the other and not on yourself. Matt, you treat Daisy as cherished and special even when she doesn't act like it. And Daisy, you treat Matt as honored and worthy of your respect even when you don't feel like it. Grace isn't treating someone the way they deserve. Grace is giving them what they don't deserve because you love them. There's an awesome quote in a marriage book that says this, in any relationship there will be frightening dry spells where your feelings of love dry up. And when that happens, you must remember the essence of marriage is that it's a covenant, a commitment, a promise of future love. And so what do you do? You do the acts of love despite your, your lack of feeling. You may not feel tender, sympathetic, and eager to please, but in your actions you will treat one another tender, understanding, forgiving, and helpful. And he says this, if you do that when time, as time goes on, not only will you get through the dry spells, but they'll become less frequent and deep. You'll become more constant in your feelings. This is what can happen if you decide to love. Well, that's all fine and good, but sometimes you're going to mess up. You're going to hurt each other on purpose. You're going to say hurtful things, and what will you do then? It says in verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, that means that you will forgive one another. Forgiveness is your opportunity to start afresh every single morning that you can forgive one another and love one another and put on love. That means sacrifice. The truth is you weren't made to get. You were made to give. My wife and I, in college, we would go by Wendy's and we would get a Frosty. And I would tell her, you can order whatever you want. And she would say, I'm not hungry. I'm not going to get anything. And then as soon as I would get into my Frosty, she would go, can I have some of that? <laughs> and I said, I just told you, I would order you whatever you want. And she always looked at me and said, it tastes better if it's yours. <laughs> That's the idea with marriage. Your life together, you're sharing it, even when you don't want to. <laughs> marriage is like that. It's better if Daisy is thriving because Matt gave of himself. And Matt is cared for because Daisy put his needs first. So often I hear the secret to marriage, the secret to marriage is compromise. But let me tell you, that's not good enough. It's not nearly good enough. That's giving just so that you can get something back. Instead, you're called to give 100%, expecting nothing back. And that's hard. And it means that you need to walk and work and talk and love and care and say sorry. How could you possibly do that? Keep forgiving each other when you hurt each other? Well, lastly, it's in verse 12. It says, God treated us as holy, even when we weren't. Did you hear it in there? It said this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. That's what you're supposed to do, is continue to consider the grace that you've been given by God. Consider that God loved you when you were not worthy when you were not your best self and He loved you anyway. And when you put His forgiveness at the center of your marriage, you'll have plenty of forgiveness for one another. You treat one another with grace. My mom and I, excuse me, my mom once found Aaron and I in a heated disagreement in her house. We had stepped out of the room so that no one could see us and we'd lowered our voices. And so basically we're having this fight together, my wife and I, but like mimes, we're like, Mm. And my mom came into the room. She saw that we were upset with one another. She took our hands and pulled us back towards each other. Now, I don't rec recommend that mother-in-laws normally do that. <laughs> but that's what you'll have in Jesus. Someone constantly pulling you back together amidst your fighting and your frustrations. And when you see that the other person is per isn't perfect, you'll have Jesus pulling you back to one another, guiding to one another. Lastly, there's this tradition in St. Louis that at a wedding, they play music and they say, anyone who's been married for a year, come on out onto the dance floor. And then they say, okay, those of you who've been married for less than five years, you come off. And they play more music. In less than 10 years, you come off. And fewer and fewer people are standing on the dance floor. And finally, this one wedding I went to, they said, those of you who have been married for 50 years can stay on the dance floor. 
and there was just one sweet older couple slowly swaying back and forth, and you could hear a pin drop. The place was just in awe of them. And not because we looked out there and said, oh, 50 years of marriage, that must have been so easy. No, it's because we were in awe of the fact of the disagreements they must have had and the frustrations and the hard times that 50 years later, they were still dancing with one another. That's what I want for you. That's what Jesus has created this for. That in good times and in hard times, in sickness and in health, that 50 years from now, you'll still be out on that dance floor. Let's pray. Father, make it so. That make it so that Matt and Daisy are still dancing together 50 years from now and more. I pray, God, that you will give them the kind of marriage that other people want to have. The way that they're tender and forgiving and encouraging. I pray that we'll be in awe of it. We thank you for these two. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all face each other, please. Matt, please repeat after me. I, Matt, take you Daisy. I, Matt, take you Daisy. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. This I do promise and covenant. This I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. Daisy, please repeat after me. I, Daisy, take you, Matt. I, Daisy, take you, Matt. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. This I do promise and covenant. This I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. <laughs> these rings are supposed to remind you of something. They're supposed to remind you about how expensive your relationship is. <laughs> <laughs> that when you look down and you see these rings, that you will remember what you have together is of value. And you don't want to give it away or trade it away for anything, just like you wouldn't give these away for anything. Let's pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we pray that these rings would be for Matt and Daisy a sign and a symbol throughout their lives of the uniqueness of their union together in Christ and their union with one another. Each time would you remind them of the permanence and unbreakable nature of their marriage. God, would you help us to be able to see Jesus' forgiveness and grace even in the way that they treat one another. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Matt, would you take this ring and place it on Daisy's finger and please repeat after me. Daisy, I give you this ring. Daisy, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get that on there. <laughs> Daisy, take this ring, please. Put it on Matt's hand and repeat after me. Matt, I give you this ring. Matt, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, giver of life and love, would you bless Matt and Daisy as they're now joined together in Christian marriage? Would you give them wisdom and devotion in their life together? That each one would be for each other a strength in need and a comfort in sorrow and a companion for joy. Would you unite their wills in your will? and their spirits in your spirit, that they would live and grow together in love and peace all the rest of their life. Father, above all, most gracious Lord, would you grant this bride and this groom 
that their marriage would over the years gloriously reflect your love for your church. For this we ask in the name of Jesus our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. For as much as Matt and Daisy have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this whole company, and thereto have given themselves each to the other and have declared the same by joining hands and giving and receiving a ring, by the virtue of the authority committed to me by God and the laws of this state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What, what God has joined together, let no man ever put asunder. Matt, you may kiss your bride. Now go in this blessing. The Lord our God fill you with his grace and grant that you may live together in all godliness and holiness with one another. And the peace of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, Daisy, and be with you, Matt, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Grab your flowers. It is my privilege, distinct privilege, to introduce to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Matthew and Daisy Arnold. Yeah.